Hi, I'm Edie Ekman. I'm a knit and crochet designer and teacher, and I'm going to show you how to work Fair Isle, or stranded knitting. I'm working from a chart that has an eight stitch repeat and a six row repeat, or six round repeat. I've expanded the chart here, chart B, to show you overall what it looks like, but you can see that this little chunk of chart A is right here and then it's just tessellated around on chart B so you can see the overall pattern. But we're just going to be reading chart A over and over. Each round is worked across and each column represents a stitch. So we're going to work the stitches in this order and we'll repeat that eight stitch repeat over and over and over, always reading from right to left until we finish the round, then we'll move on to round two and work in this direction over and over. So the first round starts with a blue stitch, two white stitches, three blue stitches, and two white stitches. Then we'll go back to one blue, two white, three blue, two white, and so on, all the way around. I have a hat in progress, and I'm ready to start again with round one. I'm holding the blue yarn in my left hand and the white yarn in my right hand. Now, you can hold both yarns in one hand or the other, whatever you're comfortable with, but I find it most efficient to hold one color in each hand. And I'll show you how I'll go about that. My first stitch down at the bottom right-hand corner of the chart is a blue stitch. Then I have two white stitches. Then three blue stitches. Then two white stitches. Now it's time to start again with that repeat. One blue, two white, three blue, two white. That's the end of my second repeat. Before we go any farther, I need to talk about tension. You want the yarn that you're carrying across the back to be nice and loose. If you're too tight, you are gonna have a problem. Let me show you what happens if you work too tightly. If I pull these stitches too tight, it's going to start squishing up the fabric. And it's just not going to look pretty. That may look fine, but you won't have enough give here to make this a comfortable hat or a comfortable fabric. You want it to be able to stretch a little bit. So you're going for a nice even tension, but not pulling too tight. I need to take those stitches out because I want my stitches to be even. I'm starting again with this first stitch of the round, keeping my stitches nice at a nice even tension. Notice I'm using the English method of throwing with my right hand and I'm using a continental style of picking the yarn with my left hand. You may be more comfortable with one or the other of these methods, but as I say, it's much more efficient to be able to do both when you're working with Fair Isle. And your continental or English method may look somewhat different from mine. That's okay. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're not holding your yarn in one hand or the other, but holding them both at the same time, you always want to keep one color below and the other color above. If you'll notice, I have got the blue yarn is sort of below the white yarn as I work in this example. You can see that the blue is staying below the white. That's because you do end up with one color dominating the other. And if you switch back and forth between which color is on top and which color is on bottom, there will be a difference in the way it looks on the right side. I'm coming to the end of the first round. There's my stitch marker that shows I'm at the end of the round. I'll slip that marker. And now I'm going to begin reading round two. Again, I'm reading from right to left because I am 
looking at the right side of the fabric at all times and I'm working in the round. So round two begins with two white stitches and then two blue stitches. One white, two blue, and one white. Now if you notice, it's actually three whites in a row because it starts again with two whites, two blues, one white, and two blues, and then I'll have three whites again. One thing to be aware of in Fair Isle is that if you have a float that's too long, a float is the piece of yarn that goes around in the back that isn't being worked. If that float is more than three or four stitches wide, you need to catch it within the fabric to keep the float from being so long that your fingers catch in it or that the stitches become uneven. I don't have any long floats in this particular stitch pattern, but I am going to show you two ways to catch that yarn in a knit stitch so that you'll know if it comes up in your work and you need to be able to do that. The next part of my stitch pattern calls for three white stitches in a row, and I'm going to want to catch the blue yarn behind the white stitches. Now I don't need to catch it in every stitch, I'm just going to catch it in one stitch. So I will want to do that in the center of those stitches. So I'll do a plain white stitch. And now in order to catch that blue yarn behind the white yarn or within the white yarn, I'm going to hold that yarn up and knit that white stitch and then allow the blue yarn to fall back down below. You can see that the yarn is twisted around and caught up, but it's not showing in the front because that's just a white stitch in the front. And now I need to do one more white stitch. And you can see the blue yarn, that's the blue stitch from the row below, but the blue yarn I caught in the back, I'll show you what it looks like here, is just tucked underneath that stitch, but on the wrong side. Let me show you that one more time. I'll get to the next spot that the pattern calls for three white stitches in a row. Here I'm ready to do three white stitches. Knit one, hold the blue yarn up, knit with the white, allow the blue yarn to drop to the back again down below and knit again. That's how you catch a float when you're knitting with the yarn in the right hand and you want to catch the yarn that's in the left hand. Now let me show you how to catch the yarn that's in the right hand when you're knitting with the yarn that's in the left hand. I'm beginning round four with two blues, two whites, one blue, two whites, now I'm going to have, I'm going to end with one blue, but actually there are three blues in a row. I want to show you what happens if I want to catch the white yarn behind the blue yarn, because see now I'm carrying the white yarn in my right hand. How am I going to catch that behind the blue yarn? It's a little bit tricky. I'll knit the first blue stitch. Then I'll insert the needle just like I'm going to knit with the blue, but the first thing I'll do is wrap the white yarn like I'm going to knit it. Then I'll wrap the blue yarn like I'm going to knit it. Now I'm going to unwrap the white yarn and pull the blue yarn through. Don't worry, I'll show you that again. Let me finish the blue stitch and you'll see that the white yarn is tucked behind the blue yarn. Let me show you that again. I'll move on to the next place that happens. I'm ready to do that again. Knit one with the blue, go into the next stitch and wrap the yarn like I'm going to knit it with the white, but I'm not actually going to pull that white yarn through. I'll wrap the blue yarn as if to knit and then unwrap the white yarn and pull the blue yarn through to finish the stitch. And if the white yarn's popping to the front, I just give it a little tug and it disappears. That's how you catch the float of the right hand yarn 
behind the stitches of the left hand yarn. Now I've been showing you how to work fair isle or stranded knitting in the round and that's the easiest way to do it because all the knit stitches are facing. Sometimes however you'll be called on to work stranded knitting with wrong side rows. In other words working back and forth right to left and left to right. Let me show you what that looks like with this same pattern. When working back and forth on a fair isle chart the right side rows are the odd numbered rows and the even numbered rows are the wrong side rows or the purl rows. I have just finished row 5 and I'm ready to work row 6 and row 6 I'll work in this direction. You'll notice this chart doesn't have numbers on this side that's because it's meant to be worked either in the round which would be this direction all the time or back and forth this direction and this direction. So now let's do row six together. Normally I wouldn't be working wrong side rows on this hat. I'm just showing you this for an example. Let's start with row six. Reading the chart from left to right on row six, I do one white stitch, two blue stitches, one white stitch, two blue stitches, and two white stitches. You'll notice I'm holding the white yarn in my left hand and the blue yarn in my right hand. That's because I'm wanting the blue yarn to stay on top of the white yarn. Remember we talked about the dominant yarn. In this case they're changing positions. Now this is a situation where I will sometimes want to catch those yarn floats. Let me show you what that looks like on a purl row. If I want to catch the blue yarn under the white yarn, I'll first work my one white stitch. Then I'm going to go in purl wise as if I'm going to purl. I'm going to wrap the blue yarn the opposite way from purling. Then I'm going to wrap the white yarn as if to purl, then unwrap the blue yarn and pull the white stitch through to the back. And then I'll work my third white stitch. I bet you'd like me to show you that again. If I want to catch the blue yarn behind the white yarn, I'll go in purl wise, wrap the blue yarn opposite the way I would normally wrap it to purl, wrap the white yarn as if I'm purling it, and then unwrap the blue yarn and pull the white yarn through to the back. Fair Isle can be kind of tricky to learn, but after you've learned it, you can establish a rhythm. Just make sure that you are leaving nice even floats across the back so that you have a stretchy fabric that's comfortable to wear. It's nice and thick and warm, so Fair Isle makes great hats and gloves and so on. Fair Isle is a specific type of stranded knitting in which you use only two colors per round, but the colors change very frequently. So you get this beautiful multicolored technique with lots of strands across the back and you can see that the wrong side is almost as pretty as the right side. This beautiful child's mitten is a great example of Fair Isle. There's one pattern on the back of the mitten and another pattern on the palm. A mitten is a great use of Fair Isle because you get a double thickness. It makes nice warm mittens. And you can see this is a mitten that's been worn quite a bit. Here's what happens if you don't get your floats secured well. Somebody's finger got caught and pulled this strand of yarn out and look what happened. So you want to really make sure you've secured those floats, especially in mittens. These are two great examples of some more complex stranded knitting.